The following is a special presentation of the Unnecessary Roughness Wrestling League. Welcome to URWL Episode 6, Reloaded. The following is a special presentation of the Unnecessary Roughness Wrestling League. could be the match of his career. But if I were to now, I wouldn't look too into the future. Because he's got a match against one of the URWL's most promising newcomers tonight. And that's former MMA standout, Alexander Kulashov. And his opponent, from Kazan, Russia, making it at 200 pounds deep, he is Alexander. Call AK-47 is met with a peppering of booze here tonight from the faithful inside the AJ Palombo Center. As you can see here, Kuleshov really dominated the wrestling style of Bob Willeker with unimaginable precision. And just because he's willing to use kicks to his advantage, he's one of the URWL's marked men, even after one match. His career is going to go sky high. However, he's not receiving a lot of respect from these fans here tonight. And deservedly so, because Hog Willeker was taken out of action last week by that awe-inspiring Kuleshov rush. And ladies and gentlemen, the road to digital mayhem begins right now. Episode 6 about to start with Tanao and Kuleshov. And here we go, we're underway. Kuleshov starting the matchup with a trademark flurry of kicks. And Tanao is down. It's really important for Kuleshov tonight to not fall into the sophomore slump because God knows it's been happening to so many wrestlers as of late. They have a full head of steam in their first match, pardon the cliche, and then they completely get run over in the second. And a great reversal by Kuleshov, AK-47, as he was known on the MMA circuit. Kuleshov now. Kick combination in the corner to Tanao. Tanao staggering, but he doesn't hit the mat. And now, rear naked choke, Kuleshov. 
Scott Bustowitz now right where he wants him to be. And it's early in the matchup, so Kuleshov undoubtedly has a lot on the table. Kuleshov looking for a triangle hold already in this matchup. But the ever agile Bustowitz now slips out of the hole. Excellent oh. technical skill of Bustowitz now colliding with the excellent attacks of Alexander Kuleshov. And this is such a great match for these two wrestlers at this point in the careers because they can learn a lot from one another. They're the rear naked choke on the mat now. Tanao rolls out. And you can never really lock boost to a Tanao in a submission hole because he can just slip out right away. However, as you've noticed, a lot of the URWL wrestlers who have faced Tanao have won by pinfall. So that's probably one of Tanao's big disadvantages heading into this matchup. Kuloshov, it seems, taking some time to pose. Now Tanao looking for something. It looks like in a DDT formation. Kuloshov looking to wriggle free. Yes, he does. Close long. And Kuleshov builds upon his advantage, but Tanao flips him right back down to the mat. Bustowitz Tanao might have him in the place where he wants him to be. Tanao looking for a tie-up. Can't get it. Kuleshov looking for a token. But Tanao reversing. Spins him around. But that does nothing for Kuleshov. Slips under Kuleshov. Toe kick hits. Punch. Another toe kick. Punch of the ropes now. Now Tanao sliding outside the ring for a little rest, I guess. One. As both men look to distance themselves, I think. To give themselves Two. a little rest. Kuleshov. Now back on the attack with a few kicks. Kick combination of the ropes now. And Kuleshov. This is himself. Tanao looking to recover. And no! Kuleshov sweeps out Tanao's legs right from underneath him. Kuleshov back on the attack. Now reversing. Token by Tanao. Reversal by Kuleshov. Kuleshov looking for something. Reversal by Tanao once again. Kuleshov. Excellent standing side kick. Tanao is down on the mat now, looking very vulnerable as Alexander Kuleshov continues his assault. Kick right to the back. Now Kuleshov once again looking to build upon it. Front drop kick. Right on the mat to Tanao. He's got me filling that one. Kuleshov looking for the pin already one, in this contest. Two. Got the two count and no. Tanao kicks out. Kuleshov understandably shaken up. And instantly he sends Tanao down with a running side kick. There's no denying, luck or hate him, I guess Alexander Kuleshov is here to stay. Shot by Tanao to the ropes. And Tanao. Looking to slide him out. Yes, he does. And Tanao's got the advantage. He walks Fine. around in the ring looking for an opening. Cool shot Dude. now distancing himself. Count is two. Now taking some time to pose. But Cool shot interrupts him. And now the two get into war words. And Cool shot gets into the ring. Sidekick sending Tanao down. Now, Cool shot. Irish trip to the corner. And now he's setting Tanao up. Submission on the ropes. Tarantula. I haven't seen them move in years, folks. And Kuleshov breaks it up. I think Tanao applied too much resistance. Kuleshov slowing down the match. And maybe I spoke too soon. Flurry and kicks coming. It's the Kuleshov rush. Yes. Spinning kick hits squarely. And the fans aren't looking at it at all. Looking for the pin now. Looking for the next to be one. Two and no. Tanao kicks out. And Alexander Kuleshov takes out the referee. I guess the referee hasn't really fought a sidekick like that in his career. That's for sure. Now Kuleshov slides out and meets Tanao. Great sidekick once again on the run. Now Kuleshov, higher trip to the barrier. We can't get anything going. Tanao reverses. And now both Busi with Tanao and Alexander Kuleshov exchanging attacks outside the ring. Snap Mare takedown by Busi with Tanao. Looking for the best spot possible. Referee one. is once again conscious. Count has started. Cool shot now Two. on the run. Missing a sidekick on Tanao. And now Cool Shot making his way up to the turnbuckle to get into the ring. And Tanao closely following. Cool Shot spinning kick. Toe kick. And another. Kick combination ending in the sweep. Yes. Cool Shot could have the match one, but no, Tanao. Once again reversing. He has a lot of guts. And the fans are appreciating that. You see all the Japanese flags in the crowd. He has a large contingent, that's for sure. Running it in. School one pin apply to Kuleshov. Two. Two and no. Kuleshov kicks out. And now Alexander Kuleshov back on the attack. Kuleshov once again. Kick combination. <clears throat> Setting Tanao near the ropes. Tanao reverses. And now boosting with Tanao. Not in the place he wanted to be. Alexander Kuleshov's got him. Once again, second time in the match. Kuleshov rush. Hit him like a ton of bricks. 
and Alexander Kuleshov not wanting to finish him with a pinfall. He's going for the triangle hold once again. Kuleshov applying pressure. It's an out and out. Alexander Kuleshov with a vicious triangle hold. It's Fusu Atanao tap out, reminiscent of his MMA days. And Fusu Atanao is still winless, heading into his career for ending match in Israel Mayhem. What's this going to mean for Fusu Atanao? Could this be the second last matchup of his career? And as Fusu Atanao walks out of this ring still winless, Alexander Kuleshov walks out of this ring 2 and 0. Fusu Atanao three. Good day, welcome to Great White North. And it's a good day indeed, because here come the number one contenders for the tag team title. Ladies and gentlemen, the following matchup is a singles matchup scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Being coming to the ring by Kyle Stafford. Being at 190 pounds in him. One tag of the Great White North, Sean McCann. The childhood friends from Toronto, Kyle Stafford and Sean McAndrew, especially, will have to be prepared tonight as Sean McAndrew makes his solo debut. product out on the air you're not giving me a quality product I'm sorry fans we're still having technical difficulties during the downfall syndicates entrance but who am I kidding there's no time to dwell the match is underway and for West Tamurka this is his first solo matchup in a while headlock takeover and now McKendrew trying to wriggle free yes he does and clothesline we know how effective the attack of the Great White North can be, but can Sean McAndrew sustain that attack for an entire matchup on his own? And we're about to find out. McAndrew going to the top rope now. Setting up. Split-legged moonsault on Westerberka. Could be an early end. No, no count. As McAndrew continuing his assault. Running neck breaker. And what impact. As Sean looking for a springboard on the top rope. Springboard leg drop barely hits. If you remember the Great White North's matchup with EOE last episode, you know what Sean McAndrew's about as he sends down Weston Merkel with a spear. As you know, these two teams will meet at Digital Mayhem 2008 in a ladder match for the URWL Tag Team titles. It's probably going to be epic knowing the track records of these two teams. As McAndrew sliding under to Merka, looking to build an attack up on this. Running Bulldog. Great impact there by McAndrew, who goes for the pin, and the powerful West Tamurka simply throws McAndrew off it. But right away, McAndrew, another running neck breaker. But it doesn't send West down to the canvas for long. As McAndrew, yet another form of running neck breaker there. As West Tamurka could be in a world of hurt here, he's trying to recover, but he's in no man's land, it seems. As McAndrew runs in, spear! Great impact, Sean McAndrew, and he's looking for the pin already, but West Tamurka simply plays dead on the canvas for a moment it seems and now West Tamurka looking to build upon an advantage after that spear went horribly awry for Sean McAndrew now a toss by West Tamurka setting McAndrew flying and now on the mat West Tamurka looks to break, break him down but a rope breaks called West Tamurka is you know a powerhouse and well, if you watch EOE in the Great White North in Episode 5, the Great White North really had their way with EOE. And apart from height, I don't think West Tamurka has the advantage in this matchup at all, but could be wrong because the advantage is switching. West Tamurka is far from the style of the Great White North, that's for sure. 
first and foremost, he's a powerhouse, and he can really just weaken every joint and muscle in your body. And that's what he's doing to Sean McAndrew now. Boston Crab on the mat, but Sean escapes. McAndrew back on the attack. And now, Tamurka just destroys him with a spear of his own. And right from that, West Tamurka setting him up. Tamurka, driver. And as Sean McAndrew looks to recover, West Tamurka's outside of the ring, beating up on Kyle Stafford, the other member of the Great Two. White North. Adrian Carnage, as you know, off screen, letting West really take on Kyle Stafford one-on-one -on -one here. And Stafford outside the ring looks like he's having an easy time with Tamurka. Tamurka's Four. down. And Kyle Stafford just staring at him. Five. Count is at five now. West Tamurka has to get back in that ring. As Kyle Six. Stafford outside the ring shoves him away and spear by Tamurka. And now both members of the Great Seven. White North are out. Kyle Stafford recovering from the spear is Sean McAndrew not fully recovered from that vicious Tamurka driver. One of the most devastating finishers by far in the URWL, that's for sure. <laughs> Close line in the corner to Sean McAndrew and Wes Tamurka. Snapmare takeover. And McAndrew down on the mat and Wes Tamurka slamming the knee right into the nose of Sean McAndrew on the mat. And now Tamurka, the downfall syndicate, looks to have the advantage, but no, McAndrew slides between his legs again, and another Bulldog. And it's that great free-form style of Sean McAndrew that's, that's really getting to West Tamurka right now. He can't really find a way to respond to something like that because he's just using so many moves in rapid succession. Now McAndrew picks him up, goes to the corner. He's got something going now. McAndrew! Devastating Bulldog! Going to the top rope once again for a springboard. Springboard leg drop hits Tamurka square. And once again, McAndrew goes for One. the pin. One count only, and Sean McAndrew decides to break it up once more. As McAndrew, rapid fire clotheslines now. Tamurka can't really recover. And running neck breaker. As McAndrew makes his way to the top rope. Once again, splitting a moonsault. Hits some square. It could be over right now. One count only, Tamurka kicks out. And now Sean McAndrew going after the ankle, but no! Spear by Tamurka, right from the rebound. And now a headlock takeover by Tamurka. Near the corner. Tamurka, arm breaker. Great execution by Wes Tamurka, former URWL North American champion back in the tech space days. He hasn't really seen championship gold yet, apart from the URWL tag team titles. Yet I can't really see just where this downfall syndicate team can really find an answer for these young guns, the Great White North. McAndrew now. Irish whip to the ropes. And a clothesline sends Tamurka flying over the top rope. McAndrew! Hits Tamurka square. No botch there. One. As much as they embarrassed themselves in episode five with a lot of botch planches on the top rope. Two. And now Sean going after Adrian Carnage outside the ring. Sends him straight back down Three. with another spear. <clears throat> And now the downfall syndicate are having their way with Sean McAndrew outside the ring. When you combine these two men together, you really get a vile combination. These two men want to stop at nothing until I and the rest of the URWL are extinguished. While the Great White North is going to make that easy at all. At least I hope not. Two. And now Tamurko with a headlock takeover outside the ring. Three. Count is at three. As Tamurka once again on breaker on McAndrew. Four. I want to know where's Kyle Stafford in all this. Five. Shouldn't he be going after Adrian? Adrian just standing there, Six. really, really motionless. As Sean McAndrew slides into the ring. Seven. He's taking a little rest now. As Tamurka looking to bring him out, but he can't do it. Tamurka slides in now. As the dazed McAndrew can't really find a spot to rest at all. And Tamurka, are you trying outside the ring? But he brings it back in the hard way. As you can see on the top and bottom of your screen now, Adrian Carnage and Kyle Stafford are equally praising and showing some derision for their teammates in this matchup. They really want one team to come out with the upper hand. And we'll be right back, everybody. Stay tuned. And Wes Tamurka still continuing to assault Sean McAndrew outside the ring Good. as this match continues. Count is two, and both men are inside. As you know, these two teams will meet at Digital Mayhem, as I said before, in a tag team ladder match for the URWL tag team titles. And the downfall syndicate have got me feeling very nervous 
going into this match because the Great White North just could give them their biggest competition yet as West Tamurka arrogantly poses above the body of Sean McAndrew. Now picking McAndrew up. Giving him a series of punches. Punch misses by McAndrew. McAndrew hits that one, setting Tamurka down. Now McAndrew, Irish whip to the corner. Looking for another opening. And another bulldog. Sean McAndrew is so good with those types of moves. And there's really no answer by West Tamurka for moves like those because he can't really counter him. He doesn't have enough speed. He doesn't have enough agility. Kyle Stafford obviously showing his enjoyment at ringside as Sean McAndrew finds an opening once again. West Tamurka walking around dazed. McAndrew hits him with a spear. Sean McAndrew comes in running and just buries Tamurka on that canvas as the count starts. Two and three. Sean McAndrew as part of the great wide North has the momentum going in a digital mayhem. Sean McAndrew. Now Ball Syndicate did this to themselves. They should have got a leg up on their opponents. And they're finding out the hard way tonight that momentum doesn't come easily in professional wrestling. Especially if you lose. Momentarily, ladies and gentlemen, we will be deciding a new number one contender for the URWL Women's Championship as we await the entrance of the new look, Kelsey McDonald. Gentlemen, this is our third contest of the evening. It will be scheduled under URWL Women's Rules and is for the number one contendership of the URWL Women's Championship. Introducing first from Port Colburn, Ontario. Weighing in at 159 pounds, she is Kelsey McDonald. Well, Kelsey has new theme music this week, but hopefully she'll have a brand new attitude because the last few matches she was in were utterly embarrassing. Those aren't the kind of matches you want to start a wrestling career with. She's winless, and she needs a victory tonight to really build up her reputation here in the URWL. But understandably, it won't be a walk in the park, because there's another wrestler who wants that URWL Women's Championship more than anything, and that's Hikari Nakamura. And now our second competitor in this contest, from Okinawa, Japan, weighing in at 149 pounds, Hikari. Nakamura! She trained under Pusi Watanao, and she has shown so far in her URWL career that she can hold her own with the entire URWL women's division. However, that hasn't translated to victories or a title win yet, but the young and talented Hikari Nakamura is definitely one of the URWL's brightest stars. And that's among even the men on this roster. Kari Nakamura has a tremendous upside. She doesn't care about the beauty, the fortune, the fame, the money, the respect. She just wants to wrestle. But our third competitor tonight has to recover from embarrassment. Cecilia Rincon had one of the most disastrous and embarrassing endings of a debut matchup in some time. And she lost not only the matchup, but the number one contendership as well. last week but she went out with a whimper and it's high time for Cecilia Rincon to really prove herself here in the URWL and earn once again a number one contendership for the URWL Women's Championship. Cecilia Rincon on paper just may be the definitive female wrestler on her roster. She's beautiful yet she's powerful but to recover from that embarrassing ending in her episode 5 contest she's gonna have to recover instantaneously put that behind her and move on because this is an important match for her tonight that remains to be seen as the match is finally underway these three ultra talented URWL female wrestlers will have the opportunity to clash with Jesse Slash at URWL Digital Mayhem 2008 for the URWL Women's Championship in a 20 minute endurance matchup and a neck breaker setting Nakamura down. And now Kelsey McDonald's going to the top rope. Kelsey! What a drop kick! 
She just flew halfway across the ring for that. Cecilia Rincon knocked almost unconscious. We're gonna have to bring that up for the URWL Master Control replay as soon as we can get it. That was outstanding, what effort. And look at this. This maneuver by Kelsey McDonald. Surprised the heck out of Cecilia Rincon, that's for sure. We thought Kelsey McDonald was gonna to try to do an aerial move on Ikari Nakamura on the mat, but she surprised everybody in the arena by focusing her attention on the unaware Cecilia Rincon. McDonald, another neck breaker takedown outside the ring to Ikari Nakamura. Now outside the ring, Kelsey McDonald setting up Nakamura. That's her finishing move. We haven't seen that yet. She calls that one a schoolgirl killer. And what a name for that move. But it's just as devastating, I think, as its name. Kelsey McDonald just really taking over this matchup. Nakamura still recovering from that schoolgirl killer. And now she's up on her feet. It's Kelsey McDonald continuing to work over Cecilia Rincon. Now we count Nakamura deciding to come back into the ring. McDonald follows and now Cecilia Rincon. And now McDonald, another European uppercut to Hikari Nakamura. Now tie up. McDonald and Nakamura once again. It's Hikari Nakamura. Punch to the spine on McDonald. Another punch now directly to the spine in the same area. Hikari posing to his fans. But no! Kelsey McDonald rushes right out of that move and turns it into something positive. Great recovery by McDonald as Hikari Nakamura, German suplex into a roll. Can't even get a one count. Now, McDonald. Irish Rabun Rincon in the corner. Rincon looking to send her out of the ring. She can't do it. McDonald rolls out of the way. No, Kelsey McDonald. Front drop kick. As Kelsey McDonald looks to go after Ikari Nakamura. Spear to the Manning. Cecilia Rincon coming out now. Another spear by McDonald. And she's celebrating every moment of it. And the fans are loving it. I guess this is a newfound attitude from Kelsey McDonald. And now Cecilia Rincon, kick combination to McDonald. And another kick directly to the head of Ikari Nakamura. Cecilia, Irish whipping to the ring. And Kelsey McDonald is back up. Now Irish whipping to the ring. And now Kelsey tries to go after Nakamura. Guillotine on the ropes. McDonald looking for an attack. Punching combination coming up. Little dance and yes. Well placed punch to the head of Cecilia Rincon. And now it seems both Nakamura and Rincon trying to slow her down. Irish whips Kelsey to the corner. And now Cecilia Rincon tries to go after Hikari Nakamura. Kelsey McDonald almost unconscious on the map from that powerful Irish whip, and now she rolls back up. Kelsey looking for something against Cecilia Rincon, but Rincon tosses her right over, and Rincon and Nakamura go at it inside the ring. And now an Enzu Giri by Cecilia Rincon. Poked to the eye on the apron. And now Kelsey running in, running neck breaker. And now Kelsey trying to go after Hikari Nakamura once again, but misses a spear. Yes, the Irish to the corner. And right away, she decides to send Ikari to the opposite corner. And Kelsey McDonald sends Cecilia Rincon right into Ikari Nakamura, and the fans are going crazy. The new look, Kelsey McDonald, just may be the new number one contender. She's wrestling like she's never wrestled before, folks. Now Rincon, fully recovered, looks for a tie up. Rincon, full Nelson and sends Kelsey down, full Nelson slam. And now Cecilia Rincon going after Hikari Nakamura. Luthez pressed to the mat. Kelsey trying to recover as Cecilia is gonna go after Hikari Nakamura. Kelsey misses a slap. Cecilia Rincon moves out of the way in time. Now Rincon and Nakamura trying to go after one another. And now after a short arm clothesline, Kelsey McDonald puts Cecilia Rincon in the backslide. But a rope break call by the referee. Great opportunity for Kelsey McDonald to get the win there, but it was not to be. Now the action has slowed down a bit. All 
through the ring, trying to distance themselves. Is he cutting out? Posing inside the ring. Kelsey looking for the opportunity. Yes, what impact! Sending Hikari Nakamura face first into the mat. It could have been curtains for Nakamura there, as Kelsey decides to Irish whip into the corner now. And now Kelsey McDonald goes to the top rope. Kelsey looking for the possible opportunity she can. Bulldog right into the mat. But Cecilia Rincon takes Hikari Nakamura right away from her. And now Cecilia looking for an opportunity on Hikari. Front drop kick. And Kelsey McDonald once again Irish whipping Hikari Nakamura into the corner. Arm drag now sending Cecilia Rincon down. Now picking her up is Kelsey McDonald. Kelsey McDonald Irish whip to the ropes. And another arm drag. Hikari Nakamura still stunned in the corner. Irish whip now once again by McDonald. Can't get anything going. And in turn, Hikari Nakamura sends her to the corner. And now once again, Cecilia Rincon and Hikari Nakamura. One on one. Nakamura once again, roll up, pin. Could this be the match? No. Kelsey McDonald there in time to break it up. Now a Cobra Clutch suplex by Kelsey McDonald and Cecilia Rincon. And now Kelsey McDonald looking for her once again. She's got her set up. Schoolgirl killer. Kelsey McDonald. One, has justified two, the odds and three, won the number one contendership two, of the URWL Women's Championship. Gentlemen, what a match for and Kelsey. And the number one contender for the URWL Women's Championship, Kelsey McDonald. And now Jesse Slash has some competition at Digital Mayhem. Kelsey McDonald will be facing Jesse Slash in a 20 minute endurance contest. Jesse just may not have that title for long. Well, the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament semifinals are here. They have an uninvited guest. Scorpion last week became one of the URWL's most notorious wrestlers, taking out Merle Hacker Jr. as he exited his car. We'll show the footage later. Let's go to Andy Mays to choose this matchup. The URWL's Hardcore Title Tournament it is scheduled for one fall and will be contested. URWL Hardcore Rules, introducing first from Hamburg, episode 5, he took matters into his own hands, re-entering himself in the tournament, attacking Pearl Hacker Jr. backstage as he left his car, then running into the ring, taking out Lucy Watanao, and winning the matchup. He took matters into his own hands. After he begged all of us at the URWL to reinsert him in the tournament, he did it himself. Tonight he's facing the man that took Seth Stern's spot in the tournament. He's taking on Taurus. And his opponent, from Tijuana, Mexico, weighing 192 pounds, Taurus! Ladies and gentlemen, the year of the bull is upon us. Taurus returned in episode 5, beating Victor Cordaro with the same move, the possum pin that Cordaro used to beat him at URWL Association 2007. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight Taurus is looking to advance to the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament Finals to get a chance to compete in one of the most dangerous matches the URWL has to offer. The Anything Goes Freestyle Hardcore Match. Tonight Taurus has got to do a lot to stop the momentum and hell bent the score. Listen to this response from Taurus here. It's unbelievable. The fans recognize what an integral part of the URWL he can become, having one of the most celebrated returns in recent memory. Now we're underway. Taurus looking at Irish Whip Scorpion into the corner. Taurus right away starting the matchup. Right from the top rope. We're not coming on it right from the top. And now Taurus looking to add some insult to injury from high risk. Four screw moonsault. Right away. Giving the fans the sign of the bull. As Taurus. Springboard moonsault for the second rope. Taurus going for the pin already. Yeah. Two, no. Almost got the win there. We're not even a minute into this matchup. Now Taurus arm drag. Setting Scorpion down. <coughs> Scorpion hasn't had his hands yet on a weapon. And Taurus is looking to keep them out of his hands in this match. Taurus, another Hurricane Rana. Going for a pin once again, holding one leg. 
One count only. That's hoe kick. That's it by Taurus. Taurus, another run gun runner. Right in the middle of the ring this time. Two, no. Near fall once again by Taurus. Scorpion kicks out in the nick of time. Now Taurus. Picking the Scorpion up. Sending him to his feet. Irish whip now. Sending him on the apron and now. Taurus, go for the top rope. Corkscrew moonsault outside the ring. I'm going to give that one a Dios mio, folks. No one moves around the ring like Taurus does. Unbelievable agility. Now Taurus has to just take down. So no, no count out in this matchup. It's being contested under URWL hardcore rules. Anything goes. As Taurus swing that sledgehammer right into the head of Scorpion. He's going to hit a home run with that thing or something. I don't know. Taurus now arm drag. As you know, in Taurus and Cordaro's matchup, there wasn't really any presence of weapons. However, in this matchup, I think Taurus really needs to use them before Scorpion uses them on him. And Taurus sends down Scorpion with a couple of punches to the spine. Taurus grabbing a ladder now. Posing inside the ring. Scorpion now, sending to his feet. And right on the attack, Schoolboy. Scorpion's got him. Two, no. Scorpion might have just come away with the upset there. His first real attack in the match. Taurus looking for something. Great arm drag. Setting up Scorpion again. Headlock takeover. Right to a wrist lock. And Taurus just inches away from hitting the ladder with Scorpion's head. And what impact there. It's now Taurus going to the top of the ladder. Taurus now, what's he gonna do? No! Corkscrew moonsault barely hit Scorpion! And the fans are going absolutely crazy! Taurus is unreal! And now Taurus going for that pin after that stellar Five. move from the top of the ladder. Yeah. Two, no, Taurus breaks it up himself. We've seen that a lot lately. It's an Irish whip now by Scorpion. Taurus ducking, jumping on the second rope. Reverse DAT! Sending the ladder down in the process. And another springboard moonsault. Could he be going for the win One, here? One, two. two, no. Scorpion kicks out. Unbelievable agility yeah. and aerial skill by Taurus. But maybe I spoke too soon because Scorpion's got some kind of advantage going here. But not for long. Taurus looking for an opening, but Scorpion takes it right away from him. Leg whip sending him now. Scorpion now looking to wrestle his match. But Taurus moves out of the way once again. Scorpion can get anything going. Back body drop now by Taurus. Now, Irish by Taurus into the corner. Taurus sitting down on the top now. Gonna set Scorpion up. Tornado DDT. Scorpion can't find an advantage here. Not at all. Taurus is just too fast for him. And now Taurus once again setting up Scorpion outside the ring. Course group boots all hits once again. And I think Taurus got the most of that. And now Taurus. Reaching below the apron. Getting a steel chair. Scorpion rolls up. Taurus plants him. Right in the head. Scorpion now has been busted wide open. And Taurus takes him down again. Taurus assaulting Scorpion with a steel chair outside the ring now. And Taurus finally planting the head of Scorpion into the matting outside the ring. And Taurus looking for an opening, but no, Scorpion comes in charging with a neck breaker. Here comes the long awaited hardcore portion of this matchup, folks. And Taurus has got to watch out. And now Scorpion. And a punch now using the chair as a barrier. Scorpion now. Snapmare takedown. Now Irish whip to the announce table outside the ring. Could be all downhill from here now. And sends Taurus right into it. And uh-oh. What's Scorpion playing to do? He's taking apart that announce table outside the ring. Luckily, I don't do my matches there anymore, folks. We've been breaking so many of them. <coughs> and an Irish whip into the barrier. Successful by Scorpion. Scorpion looking to pick Taurus up, but Scorpion can't hold on. Taurus gets out right away. Not looking to take any humiliation. Taurus now, another Irish whip to the barrier. Looking to annihilate Scorpion on the barrier now. 
Setting that busted open head of Scorpion into the barrier multiple times. Spreading that blood all around his forehead. And a gruesome sight now is Scorpion's face. As Taurus. He's going to set something up now. Great Huracan on a takedown. And the multiple time Lucha Libre champion in Mexico. Once again showing the URWL just what he's made of. And how seriously he takes his job. And Taurus. Setting up Scorpion now once again on the turnbuckle. Taurus now. Excellent Hezizer's takedown from the turnbuckle. And Taurus once again doing it like nobody can here in the URWL. Just when you think he's reached his peak, he comes up with something more creative. Sorry, Monk Boon, I stole your line. Anyway, Taurus can't find a weapon outside the ring under the apron, so he comes back in. Once again, concentrating on breaking down Scorpion in any way possible. Arch him to the corner once again. And now Taurus, setting up something. Great hand spring takeover. And Taurus once again looking for another option here. Setting Scorpion down in a heap on the mat. If I were Taurus, I'd end it right now. Because Scorpion is being out-wrestled. The only real way I think Scorpion could probably build an advantage in this matchup is by using a weapon. And I think Taurus is really trying to move Scorpion away from the weapon so that he can get the win cleanly. A combination outside and an inverted Enzu Giri. And a Scorpion looking to start something here. And now for both wrestlers, fatigue seems to be setting in. Maybe I spoke too soon now. Scorpion on the run, shoulder block, setting Taurus down. And now Scorpion finally can get something going here. Scorpion. DT formation, no. Could be setting him up for a suplex here. Scorpion, jackhammer. What a maneuver by Scorpion. And we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we were away, we had our first table break. An announce table has been shattered. Scorpion did the unthinkable. The Taurus, we're going to show it to you on our URWL Master Control here. Take a look at this, folks. Jack Hammer through a table. Let's roll that one more time for good measure. Unbelievable attack. But what's even more amazing is Taurus looks like he hasn't really sustained any damage from that, which just boggles my mind as both men continue to break down one another in this hardcore title tournament matchup. As Taurus now. Huracan Rana one. takedown once again. One count only. And despite being put through an announce table, Taurus is still alive and kicking. Our trip to the table inside the ring that he set up himself. He's putting Scorpion on top. Taurus now going to the top rope. Oh my God. Dragon Rana right through the table. Everybody standing here inside the AJ Palumbo Center. Scorpion just maybe as good as dead here. And a Huracan Rana right from the top rope. And now, who's this? That's Cobra. Taurus doesn't even notice he's behind him. Cobra. Huracan Rana takedown. Cobra has interfered, saving his big brother Scorpion from sudden defeat. And Cobra, front drop kick, setting Taurus down. And now Scorpion goes for the pin. One, two, two three. Scorpion advances. The URWL High Flyer Champion, helping out his older brother, helping him to advance to the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament Finals. And if I were Taurus right now, Cobra would be A number one on my hit list. By far, Scorpion. Your winner tonight. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, the Blood Invitational continues here in Episode 6. And by the looks of it, Blood just may not be champion for as long as he's expected.
to distance himself from the rest of the order of your roster because he knows he's a marked man in that locker room. He knows that there is a waiting list for the blood invitation. He knows that URWL wrestlers are gunning to win that URWL North American Championship from him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are awaiting his second mystery and opponent. And the challenger. And it's J.J. Brown. second man to have a shot at blood here in the blood invitational and if i were blood i'd be wondering what the heck did i get myself into the powerhouse the former bodyguard jj brown has his first matchup in solo action here tonight and he's looking to be the first man tonight to usurp the current urwl north american champion blood like every Blood Invitational match, this matchup is for the URWL North American Championship, currently held by Blood. Blood and JJ Brown squaring off in the second matchup of the Blood Invitation, and we're underway. And Blood starting off the match once again with some dirty tactics. Now Blood setting up JJ in a powerbomb position. One powerbomb picks him up again. Another. And now a third time. Spinning him around and setting him down. And Blood now taking some time to ridicule these fans. As JJ Brown gets right back up and sends Blood right back down with a chop. JJ, as you know, hasn't been having a lot of luck in the tag team ranks, but that's fine. Because tonight he can really change all that. He can branch off into a solo career if he wins this matchup. And it could be really good for him. Tie up near the ropes. JJ Brown, short arm clothesline. And he picks Blood right back up again. And another short arm clothesline. What power by JJ. It's JJ now. Sends Blood right back down again. And clobbers him with punches right to the head. Understandably, Blood has got to be reeling. And JJ Brown in the driver's seat here early in this contest. Blood stays as champion. Could be number. They weren't already. Now, JJ. Into the corner. And a series now of body shots. The blood right in that corner and a shot to the head. Sends blood right back down. JJ Brown, as you know, a former bodyguard. So he's a natural born brawler, essentially. JJ Brown! Huge backdrop! And JJ's got something good going. Now on the mat, J.J. Brown, sharpshooter, looking to weaken the legs, weaken the knees, weaken the core of blood, but blood escapes right away. Now J.J. Brown picks blood up and sends him right back down with a big boot. J.J. Brown, very powerful, cannot underestimate him. He's one of the URWL's premier big men, that's for sure. But since he's in the tag team division, not a lot of matches can really be showcased solely on him. He's got to rely on Carl Lode as well. And that's what's really made EOE a great tag team, but we haven't really seen a lot of good results from them in the YouTube era. It's Blood. We're going to have some of his first advantage of the match. A poke to the eye. This is looking very familiar now as Blood. DT plants JJ square into the mat. As Blood looks to recover. Favoring his midsection, JJ's weakened it a lot in this matchup so far. As Blood now on the mat. Bow and arrow lock. Applying pressure. Great intensity by Blood, but not enough. JJ Brown gets out easily. Now both men staring each other down. But Blood ends that. Tie up. And a bear hug coming. Blood now. Applying pressure to the bear hug, but JJ gets out. JJ favoring his back slightly. And now he runs in. Attacking Blood. Tackle in a series of punches yet again. And JJ really knows what buttons to push. <clears throat> Super kick right to the face. JJ once again continuing his onslaught. Now JJ Brown after an elbow drop to the mat picks Blood up. JJ Brown back body drop. 
What power by one half of VOE, JJ Brown here tonight. You could be looking at the next URWL North American Champion. And Blood once again looking like he's not really showing up for battle here tonight. As JJ in the corner. Sends Blood straight down the mat. JJ climbing the turnbuckle now. JJ looking for something. Somersault splash from the top rope. And I didn't think the words versatile and JJ Brown could be combined in a sentence, but I'm going to say it. JJ Brown is showing his versatility. But Blood, not having that, stomp right to the toes. Now it's Haya. Blood now, once again, bear hug on JJ Brown. We're going to weaken him from the core up. But he can't do it once again. JJ escapes. Blood ring in now and choke right in front of the referee. And he's doing nothing about it. And now he finally intervenes, breaking both of the men up. Now Blood, headlock takeover. And another choke right in front of the referee. And the referee once again has to step in. And Blood once again looking, almost mocking Akina there. It's almost a similar taunt to his. And Blood once again showing, showing how uncontrollable he is. Punch right to the groin area. And the ref seems to be tolerating it. But for what reason? And the referee gets sent down. Tolerating a clothesline. Well, we knew that one was coming. Blood simply throwing the rule book out the window. Irish whip once again to the turnbuckle. JJ. Placing Blood on top. JJ Brown. Setting Blood up once again. Looking forward. Yes, he hits it. Back body drop. And the referee. Sitting up, coming back to his feet. Could JJ be looking for the pin now? Could JJ finish it? No, he doesn't. Decides to Irish whip blood outside the ring and shoves him out. One. And now the count starts. JJ Brown Two. holding a commanding lead in my mind in this matchup. Blood can't really Three. find an answer for him. Except to use mainly dirty tactics Four. which always seem to work for him JJ now Five. Irish whip to the post he sends blood in the ring and blood Six. has been bloody yet again but when blood feels his own blood rushing down his forehead things won't be good for his opponent but that could all change tonight JJ Brown what a swinging neck breaker executed only like JJ can with great power and JJ now we're gonna weaken blood with punches but blood no chop block running in and just like I said blood's got some blood on his forehead and he's about to let loose back break on JJ Brown and now an inverted rear naked choke on Brown And now here's the North American champion we remember and want to forget. Blood now looking for the rest of the match his way. Now Blood setting up JJ on the mat. No, another low blow. Punch right to the groin. Now Blood looking to go after the referee once again. The official trying to back away as fast as possible. And Blood a running DDT. And ladies and gentlemen, the URWL on YouTube will return momentarily as we continue this second matchup of the Blood Invitational. Stay tuned. And we're back, everybody. JJ Brown and Blood colliding in the second match of the Blood Invitational. The unexpected opponent, JJ Brown, coming in. And the first half of this matchup was honestly dominated by JJ. But Blood looks to be coming back at this point in the match. And J.J. Brown has been busted wide open. Could this be the beginning of the end for J.J. Brown? As Blood continues to assault the referee, and he finally does it. And now both men have donned the proverbial crimson mask that Gordon Sully reminded us so much about in the early days of wrestling. Poke to the eyes, and the referee's out. And so Blood decides to take a weapon. Doesn't use it right away. J.J. still stunned. And a sledgehammer to the midsection by Blood. Continuing to mold the rules in his favor by taking out the referee. One. 
And finally, the referee regains consciousness as blood Two. with a backbreaker incapacitates J.J. Brown outside the ring. Three. And how quickly did that advantage shift? How long ago was I mentioning Four. that J.J. Brown could be the next World of the All North American Champion? I mean, there's still a chance. Five. But blood has now, it seems, returned to form. Six. Now Irish whip to J.J. Brown. Count is at six. Seven. And now at seven, Blood takes him out with a chop block. Eight. The count is at eight. The outcome could be in jeopardy here. And now nine. at nine, Blood slides into the ring and slides back out. The count has been reset. Eight. As One. Blood finds the perfect opportunity and sends J.J. Brown's head right into the iron ring post. Two. Blood continuing to humiliate J.J. Brown in the second half of this Three. matchup. After the commercial break, Blood is just piled on a series of attacks Four. that J.J. Brown cannot really counter. And once again, after an Irish whip to the post, ah. Blood sends J.J. Brown's head squarely into it and throws J.J., the almost lifeless J.J., into the ring. Placing J.J. Brown on the top rope and sets J.J. down into the tree of woe. And now Blood yeah. using his boot to choke J.J. in the tree of woe. And J.J. falls harmlessly to the canvas. Now Irish whip to the other corner. Blood looking to augment his advantage. And sends J.J. Brown's head squarely into the turnbuckle pad. Now Irish whip to the ropes. And right off the rebound, J.J. Brown comes in, tackles Blood, and follows it up with another series of punches. J.J. Brown took that advantage right away from Blood, and now he's in the driver's seat. Now a tie up. Blood looking to kick out of it. He does. And another blatant choke right in front of the referee. Both men are bloody messes. Both men are obviously weary. But only one man can emerge as champion here tonight. As Blood once again, another blatant chokehold in front of a referee who he has knocked out twice in this matchup. Now another Irish trip to the corner. And Blood once again introduces J.J. Brown to the top turnbuckle pad. And now another Irish whip. And Blood once again, another blatant choke, but this time it's in the corner. And I think the referee is really giving in here to Blood. Has the referee caved into Blood's demands? I'm not sure of anything. The URW1 North American champion, Blood, has just been ruthless. And oh no, don't, don't, don't tell me. It's, he's going to do it again. That's the paralyzer. J.J. Brown favoring his back. He could be knocked out cold. He could One, have a concussion even. Two, three. Just like that. And in a matchup where at the onset he was bound to fail, Blood finds a way to win yet again. Understandably, these fans are disappointed. But blood proving tonight. But remember, folks, the next match blood will be in will also be a blood invitational matchup. And that matchup will be a digital mayhem. Who will be next to face the North American champion? I guess we'll find out soon enough. One finalist has been decided. Now a second finalist must emerge. Let's go down to Amy Mace to introduce the second and final semi-final matchup. The U.R.W.L.'s hardcore title tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is the second and final semi-final matchup of the U.R.W.L. hardcore title tournament. Introducing the first, from the United Kingdom, being 218 pounds. Yeah. You want to talk about important matches? Fusion just may have the most important matchup he's yet to face in the YouTube era in front of him. He's going to be facing the undefeated monster of Hawaii, Aki. Fusion as of late has really defied his critics. And if he wins this matchup, how important will it be for advancing his career to be in that final matchup and face Scorpion at Digital Mayhem at the URW Hardcore title? Well, Fusion, he's been on the grand stages before. Can he take it one step further? Can he become a finalist? Well, it's easier said than done, folks.
His opponent tonight, Akina, has really plowed through the composition of the URWL in his short time here. But Fusion is becoming equally as important here in the URWL. But Fusion isn't going to be tasting victory that easily because he's got to face the monster from Maui, Akina. He's finally back in action. And Andy Mace has all the information for him. Scorpion in the first round of the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament, and I guess that must have left a bitter taste in Scorpion's mouth. Because Scorpion re-entered himself into the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament, and look, he's in the finals. But you can definitely make a case against that point, because Scorpion cheated his way to the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament Finals. Akina is discontent, beat him fair and square. And if Akina and Scorpion meet once again at Digital Mayhem in that freestyle hardcore match, it's going to be ugly, first and foremost. And Akina knows what's ahead of him. He can become a finalist with just one more win. A meet Scorpion in the URWL Hardcore. And if this is anything like his previous matches, Akina just may be the more powerful man in this contest. Akina once again starting the match up now with a running sidekick. Planting Fusion into the mat. Sending Fusion to the corner and down. And Akira distancing himself. Looking for an opening here, Shining Wizard. Now Akira, moving Fusion over and setting him up once again. Akira, Camo Clutch Suplex. We've seen these moves before from Akira. Really no surprise he's going back to them. A powerhouse from Maui, Hawaii. Akira is just one of the more unique competitors here in the URWL roster. Picking him up and setting him down, bad body drop. Great impact by Akina. And our fans responding as Akina showing his uncontrollable nature. <coughs> now taking a page out of Interactive's playbook, picking up Fusion by the collarbone. <coughs> and sitting him back down once again with a couple of shoulder charges. And Fusion out of the gates. It looked like Fusion was coming in with a lot of momentum, but I guess Akina is really taking it away. As Akina sets him up once again and a camera plus suplex. What great execution there by Akina. And just like that, Akina sets him down! Decapitator! He's going for the pin now! It could be over right away! One, One two. two, and no! Fusion kicks out of the pin after the decapitator! No one's done that yet! What intestinal fortitude now by Fusion as he slides out of the ring. Now Fusion jumping on the mat. Poke to the eye of Akina! And Fusion grabs the steel chair. Akina in a daze. Fusion now. Missing with the steel chair. Bunny hits him there. Off the miss. Fusion recovers in time so that Akina couldn't get anything going. And now Fusion assaulting Akina with the steel chair. Going to target the knee. Yes, he does. Leg lock on the mat. Putting some pressure on that knee, as I said, of Akina. And Akina favors it before Fusion brings him to his feet. Now Fusion to the corner. Fusion now, placing Akina on the top rope. Looking to set the big man up. Fusion now! Side slam from the top! And Fusion's got a great opportunity here. He's going to the top rope now. Fusion! Elbow drop hits Akina squarely. And he goes for the pin, but Akina throws him off like nothing. And the monster looks to gain some kind of advantage back. Now a schoolboy by Akina, looking to pin two. Fusion, two and no, kick out by Fusion, right at the last moment. And an arm track by Fusion, sends Akina down to the canvas. And immediately afterward, Fusion now, gets the ropes and fist drop. As I was saying before, Fusion, despite competing recently in the high flyer division, is much more than just that, he's not one dimensional at all. <coughs> showing everyone that he can compete against very different opponents. We've seen this one before, acrobatic arm drag. No one can really do that quite like Akina can. Very acrobatic for a man his size. And now Akina, Arch Whip sending Fusion outside the ring. Now Akina climbs out himself. Looking under the apron now, he has a weapon, it's a sledgehammer! And the sledgehammer, no! Hits Fusion squarely in the abdomen. And continuing the assault is Akina. On the padded floor outside the ring. Akina once again with a couple of shots to Fusion with a sledgehammer. As Akina goes for the pin, now schoolboy, no count. Back on his 
feet. Irish will just down to the barrier, and Akina stops before anything can happen. And right from that, Fusion finds a good opportunity. And now Fusion, Irish whip, sending Akina inside. Fusion quick to follow. Fusion now, arm drag. We're gonna set up Akina with something special here. He's got something going, bow and arrow lock. Fusion defeated Plum with this move back in episode three. Applying pressure, no, Akina breaks it. He's far too strong. Understandably, both men's higher. Looks like Fusion trying to move to Akina, but Akina countered the punch. And no, Akina sends Fusion right back down to heap for the strong clothesline. And once again, Akina showing his power, picking up Fusion by the collar. Now Irish whipping to the ropes. Great side slam. And Akina looking for a weapon once again. And now Akina finds one. It's another steel chair. Fusion up to his feet. But not for long, Akina sends Fusion down. And now repeated shots by Akina. No question the favorite going into this matchup. Fusion once again wants to win the spoiler as much as possible. Now knee lifting the corner. Akina. And a bulldog right from it. Great agility, great articulation there by that 290 pound Akina. And once again, Akina picking Fusion up. <coughs> Akina's got him right where he wants him to be. Now to Captain again. Fusion's head bouncing off the canvas as Akina slides out of the ring to retrieve another piece of weaponry. We'll be back momentarily, ladies and gentlemen. All right, everybody, we're back. Final semifinal matchup of the URWL's Hardcore Title Tournament as Fusion right from the break dons the proverbial crimson mask, blood rushing down his forehead after the vicious headbutt by Akina. Now, once again, Akina spreading the blood over his face. Vicious punching combinations. But Akina too tired to continue. I guess he wore himself out as Akina leaves Fusion in a pool of his own blood. Now Akina, getting Fusion back up. He's gonna use a chair now, and no! Steel chair right to the head by Akina. Folks, he's brutal when he needs to be. Akina is just something else in this matchup. And he's gonna need all of that intensity if he wants to move on and face Scorpion, because we know how brutal Scorpion has been the last few weeks. And now Akina. Just like we've seen many times before tonight, he undoes the announce table. But Fusion picks up on it right away, climbs out of the ring, and neck breaker on Akina. And now Fusion has an opening. Fusion looking to utilize it as much as possible. Headlock takeover. And Fusion now. Reverse chin lock applied with an underhook. But once again, Akina escapes. Sang Akina up. And look at this! Fusion, what strength from when he's picking up the 290 pounder above his head! And sends him right back down! Fusion, understandably shaken up after that one. Akina, still out from the impact that Fusion has just delivered to him. As Fusion searches for a weapon, and he finds one inside the ring, a steel chair. Akina now. Back to his feet, almost in a daze, and no! Fusion sends Akina down. And now once again, the fans standing looking to see what Fusion's getting. Akina still out outside the ring. Now Akina back to his feet. Fusion plants Akina in the head, and Akina has been busted wide open. This is the opportunity Fusion needs in this matchup. Irish whip now to the table. Fusion. Could be winning himself the match here. Fusion, what's gonna happen? He's setting him up. Fusion, focus. Oh, but he just missed the table by inches. If Fusion would have sent Akina through that table, it would have been curtains. Now, will that be a mistake? Or will that be used to Fusion's advantage? Only time will tell, folks. Now, Fusion's gonna try it one more time. Looking to end the monster's winning streak once and for all. Looking for a vertical suplex, but suddenly can't pick him up. He was able to pick him up earlier. Akina too heavy for him. As Akina, arm wrench attempt, I think. Ah, uh, we'll leave the interpretation of that for another time, I guess. But Akina sends him right back down and off the table with a clothesline taking his legs out. It was creative, that's for sure. Akina looking to take out Fusion by any means necessary here tonight. Multitude of stops in the corner. Looking to add some insult to injury. Finishes it off. And now Fusion, worse for wear. Could this be Fusion's last stand in this matchup? Akina Irish whips him onto the announce table. The Gavitator now fails to break the table. 
And Akita is now going to try for something with much more impact. What's it going to be? Akita. <coughs> Knockbreaker. My God, what an impact. One, Sends it right through that two, table. Three. And Akita advances to the URWL Hardcore Title the Tournament Digital Finals at Digital Mayhem 2008. What a maneuver by Akina to send Fusion to the table after the decapitator failed. And the monster from Maui, Akina, still undefeated in his URWL career. What's this gonna mean for Scorpion? Will Akina get the upper hand under once again against you may have? It just gives me chills. Tonight, former URWL Impact Champion Jamie Nino has one more chance to collide with Interrogative one-on-one. -on -one. But he has to survive in Karate. Number one contender. Folks, in episode five, Jamie Emo was embarrassed yet again. The result, well, exactly the same result as at Discontent 2007. Jamie Emo lying in a pool of blood, humiliated. This matchup was not a singles matchup. It was a handicap matchup. Jamie Emo knew that from the onset, that a match against Salvatore with interrogative at ringside would not go the way he had planned. And once again, Jamie Emo, who has been humiliated ever since discontent, was humiliated yet again. But as you know, Jamie Emo always bounces back from humiliation. I talked to him backstage before the event, and he said that there is no tomorrow anymore. That he must win. The real question is now, who did interrogative pick? And he's opponent. What the hell? You've got to be kidding me! Interrogative has picked Victor Cordaro to be his number one contender. He's lost it. El Mariachi, Victor Cordaro! We don't know what's going through the mind of Interrogative right now. He thinks Victor Cordaro is the best number one contender here in the URWL? That he is worthy enough to step into the ring with Jamie Emo? He's setting Victor Cordaro up for career suicide right now. Victor Cordaro is in the high flyer division. I mean, it, it still could be an entertaining match potentially, but Jamie Emo is out for revenge over anything else. About Cordaro right now, I get the hell out of there. Unbelievable turn of events here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Interrogative has lost his mind. And Jamie Emo must get through Victor Cordaro tonight to be able to get a shot at the URWL Championship in Digital Mayhem. Series of stomps on the canvas. Jamie Emo starting this matchup. Fast and furious. Gonna break down Cordaro with agility. And yes, sends Cordaro down with an Enzugiri. Great acrobatic move there by Jamie Emo, former URWL internet yeah. champion, and the man who just may be number one contender yeah. after this contest. Yeah. Emo not even letting up for yeah. a second, continuing an onslaught of stomps on the mat. Victor Cordaro doesn't know what he's got himself into. What's he being in this? As Jamie Emo goes to the top now. He's looking for it. Great elbow drop by Cordaro on the mat. And this matchup is getting yeah. uglier and yeah. uglier by the second. You went out, series of punches. Already the ropes. Now Emo, drop kick, finally sending Cordaro down. Jamie Emo's not let up, and he's not gonna let up now. Jamie Emo sending Cordaro up. He's got a beam motion. Jamie Emo stopping at nothing. He's going for the pin now. Two. Emo breaks it up. And he just at the match. Emo now once again taking Cordaro down. And another series of stomps. He's wrestling against Cordaro like he was interrogative. And if I were any URWL right. fan right now, I'd feel sorry for Victor Cordaro being thrown in this mess. But it's just another reason Dude. why interrogative has really gone off the deep end as of late. As Jamie Emo looking for a steel chair underneath the apron. Jamie Emo! 
Hits Cordaro against the ropes. And JB Mo sends Cordaro out with a steel chair shot. Mimo now outside the ring, continuing right. his onslaught on Cordaro. Uh. Two. Stomps now by uh. Emo to the head. And Emo now looking for another weapon. Three. It's a barbed wire baseball uh. bat, and he makes contact. Uh. Four. If I'm watching this right now and I'm interrogative, I'd be wondering why, number one, uh. I put a guy like Cordaro in this matchup because he's getting destroyed. And this uh. is sending a Six. message out to interrogative saying, is this the best you really have? Seven. Both men in the ring. Now Emo setting Cordaro up on the top turnbuckle. Emo looking for an opening. Emo! Side slam off the top rope. And the former URWL internet champion is going out for more hardware. Unbelievable turn of events. Emo accidentally drops the chair before going into the ring. Picks it up once again. Drops it once again. I think he just wants to continue the match. Without any weapon for the time being. Now Emo. Irish whip to the corner once again. And Emo. Kind of an armor here is going to the top. Oh, we know what this is! Emo! He's done it again! Acrobatic DDT! I wouldn't think I would ever see that move again for Jamie Emo, but he just did it. He's throwing everything in the book at Victor Cordaro right now, who's got to be feeling Dude. immense amounts of punishment here. Interrogative set him out to be left for dead. And I think maybe in the crazed recess of his mind, Interrogative knows that Jamie Emo eventually will face him one more time in Digital Mayhem, and I'm thinking it's going to happen the way this match is going. Gonna set up Cordaro now, and he does it again. He's ready for it. Another emotion by Jim Emo on the way. Yes, he hits it. And the relentless attack by Jim Emo continues One. as he is fighting like a man possessed here tonight. And now he moves out of the ring, Two. taking apart the announce table. And what's gonna become of this? We've had three table dismantlings here tonight, and three table breakings here One. tonight. Not counting the one that was broken by Taurus in the ring. One. As Jamie Emo hits with a perfect German suplex Two. on Victor Cordaro. Now Emo sliding in and out of the three. ring. Resetting the count. It was at three before. Now it's back one. at one. Emo. Irish whip now to the announce table. And Emo now Two. looking to slide in the ring. Jamie Emo going to the top rope. Three. No, Emo, don't do it! Suicide dive all the way from One. the top. Unbelievable turn of events here tonight. Jamie Two. Emo wrestling like his career depended on it. And Victor Cordaro, God bless his soul, Three. really, really thrown into a mess of confusion. As Jamie Emo sends another barbed wire bat straight into Cordaro's cranium. You hear that? Jamie Emo signaling for the champion. He wants the champ. He wants interrogative right now. Emo once again laying out Cordaro with a barbed wire bat. And here he comes. Interrogative is stopping the madness himself. It's official. Interrogative wants Jamie Emo. But look at Emo now! Emo running up the ramp! Running DDT on Interrogative right during his entrance! Jamie Emo fighting all over the arena here tonight! Looking to make a statement! And vertical suplex on the ramp! And a running closer! Interrogative electing to stop the madness between Emo and Cordaro! And I think deep down inside, like I said before, Interrogative knew that Victor Cordaro was just going to be a punching bag for Jamie Emo here tonight. And it's now official, it seems, Emo and Interrogative at Digital Mayhem. Both men squaring off now. And after Emo misses a clothesline, both men take time to stare each other down, just like they did at the beginning of their match at Discontent. But Jamie Emo's having no part of it anymore. Irish whipping to the ring. Tie up. Emo 
German suplex. Well placed, these fans are going wild. What do you want to know, adding insult to injury? Attacking Interrogative with a barbed wire bat. Right against the ropes now is Interrogative. And Emo slides him outside. We're seeing a new Jamie Emo here tonight. A revitalized Jamie Emo as he looks to be in prime form for the matchup of his life. Coming up Digital Mayhem, it's now official, ladies and gentlemen. Interrogative finally answers Jamie Emo's call. And Jamie Emo is running all over Interrogative right now. And another running DET outside the ring. Now Emo finally picking up Interrogative. Here's from inside. And Emo, no! Chair shot right to the head. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this confrontation between Jamie Emo and Interrogative now continues as Emo grabs another steel chair. And he executes a vicious chair shot right to the head. Emo now once again, no! Once again, right to the head with a steel chair is Jamie Emo on Interrogative. The revitalized Jamie Emo is looking to break down Interrogative before they eventually meet in Digital Mayhem. Neckbreaker right from the top rope. And now Emo has to drive into the place he wants to be in. Jamie Emo! Emo shoot on Interrogative! And Jamie Emo sends a message out to the entire New York Wells and the entire wrestling world saying, I'm for real. I'm championship material. And it will officially be Jamie Emo and Interrogative squaring off for the New York Wells Championship at Digital Mayhem in Kansas City, Missouri on the 26th of April. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you then. Good night. It's the sound of 20,000. 20,000 strong. 20,000 united. That's mayhem. It's seeing your career unfurl before your eyes and then winning your redemption. That's mayhem. It's battling a field of eight others to find a spot in the unruly, hardcore, anything goes contender for match of the year. That's mayhem. And this is mayhem. Digital Mayhem. Experience URWL Digital Mayhem 2008, April 26, 2008, on YouTube.com. Jamie Emo will collide one last time with the URWL Champion Interrogative. In the brutal, in a match. Also, Akita and Scorpion battle in the URWL Hardcore Title Tournament Finals. In the URWL's most unruly matchup, the freestyle hardcore match, where anything goes and anything is legal. Also, the now fall syndicate will face the Great White North for the URWL Tag Team Titles in a tag team ladder match. These matches and more will comprise the URWL's biggest YouTube card yet. Ten matches of pure digital mayhem. Can you wrestle two matches in one night? Only if you have two very good reasons. For Jamie Emo, those two reasons are Salvatore and Interrogative the two men who have tormented every hour of his life since they ruined his chances at the URWL Championship at Discontent 2007. He had to start all over again, work his way back into the main event. It wasn't easy. It was humiliating. And he proved all of his critics wrong once again. Now, he has a chance to bring his URWL internet title back home against Salvatore in the first match of the evening and gets one more chance at glory against the undefeated URWL champion interrogative in the main event. Red 
redemption is mayhem. Digital mayhem. <laughs>